Now going to security, you paid a visit to Nam de Kano. Uh, the other day took took a lot of attention uh, nationwide uh, and so on. And the, the question is, how do we transform that as a symbolism into actually uh, an effort towards cleansing uh, Anambra of all uh, forms of uh, agitation and criminality? Well, uh, thank you very much. I um, Yes, when I came in, I did make a point that, um, I, that um, I put up my hands and said, I'm prepared to dialogue with anyone, to discuss with anybody and everybody who could play any role in bringing about uh, sec uh, security, uh, law and order to the homeland. Uh, because without that, nothing happened. And I made it clear that I was prepared to dialogue with any and everybody whom I thought had something to offer. And, um, and in that process, we met with the clergy, we met with the town unions, we met with the uh, traditional rulers, women groups, youths, we even had the security summit, uh, and I had tried to meet with all kinds of disparate groups, appealed, even gave amnesty to those in the bush, armed in their various camps, come out. We'll provide you something. We'll try to help you to rehabilitate, and so on. And the truth of the matter is that uh, Nam De Kano and his, uh, is a leader of the IPOB, OK? And um, the IPOB has a, a group called the ESN, Eastern right. Security Network, ESN. And for better or for worse, <laughs> discussing security or insecurity in the South is one way or the other. Again, the conversation gets back again to this particular uh, sector. And uh, it's important in trying to be, have full coverage uh, that everybody, everybody, literally mean everybody, is brought to the table in that conversation. And so, yes, I thought he was a very critical uh, stakeholder in this uh, conversation, um, bringing peace and stability in the homeland. And I paid him a visit. And, um, and, and then I was, I was quite impressed with his um, disposition. And uh, he was saying that in the presence of even um, some of the senior officials of uh, the PSS, that, I mean, he very much um, detested the spilling of innocent blood by some criminals um, all over uh, the place that have also, you know, operating, unfortunately, they claim to be operating under the name of IPOB or ESN. Um, that's what they claim. I, I mean, I don't know uh, which is good, but it's evident to me that quite a lot of criminal gangs have emerged uh, because it's a lucrative criminality, kidnapping, stealing, taking people's properties, and so on and so forth. It's become such a lucrative uh, uh, business for them that, you know, different camps, different commanders, different segments, every criminal gang now claims to be um, a liberation movement, uh, as it were. It's become evident. But one thing that I, um, I was happy about was uh, hearing him denounce uh, criminality, hearing him you know, expressing regret over the, um, the way things have turned and told me even that he wasn't the one even who authorized the uh, sit at home, uh, so to speak. And I uh, didn't quite understand um, uh, that. And severally, which is interesting, um, before the visit and after the visit, he's on the official spokesperson of IPOB, and they have been issuing statements. They have condemned the criminality going on and dissociated themselves from it. They have um, uh, also issued statements saying, I mean, condemning the sit at home, <laughs> you know, uh, every Monday. Yeah. And then some other gangs issue counter statements and so on and so forth. And we are dealing with that. So we have those kind of things, at least it is now on record. And I think uh, following the, um, um, his hearing on last Tuesday, he made some statements publicly where he was asking for calm and peace in the Southeast and so on. You know, we need everybody who has a voice. 
course, he has his own followers, uh, as it were, to come into this. All we want, bottom line, is peace, peace, law and order, security in the homeland, so that we can have this livable and prosperous homeland. Some people believe that uh, Namdi Kanu could not be trusted because he had, uh, before he, he got into uh, government uh, uh, custody, issued statements that were actually incendiary and that he has set this, thing, uh, set this fire uh, on the mountain. Do you think he's playing humble because he's under um, government um, control or that the matter has now carried out of his own control? Well, I am. I don't have the gift of clairvoyance um, <laughs> to know what is going on in the mind or what is the and what happened and how it happened. For me, I'm I have a single-minded focus on outcomes, um, uh, as it were. Uh, whether whatever anybody did yesterday or said yesterday for me, that's it. Okay, fair enough. We learn from history, and all of that is good to speculate about what is happening, what could be this or what could be that. For me, the important thing, the substance for me, was hearing him, having this conversation with him about how the homeland was becoming desolate if we allow this criminality to go on. And himself expressing his utmost displeasure about that and consequently asking his followers uh, to impress peace and um, and uh, law and order and security as the case may be. So for me, that is the substance, that is the takeaway, and that's the one that I hold on to. Whatever may be the motives, whatever, whatever happened in the past or how it happened or whatever, that's not, now I have a job to do. And my primary job is to bring peace and security to, to my people and anybody who has something to offer. Uh, in that regard, we got to um, uh, get the person to play uh, such a role. I think um, uh, in the fullness of time, it remains to be seen, as you rightly said, um, a lot of criminal gangs have emerged. That's no question about it. A lot of criminal gangs have emerged. And that's because it's profitable. Um, yesterday, I mean, about yesterday, a major raid on some of the, one of the camps at all uh, in uh, Osumo, you know, they got to the camps, six vehicles were rescued, including a Hilux, or uh, belonging to the uh, Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel, <laughs> you know, that people had taken into the place. Six mm -hmm. vehicles, Jeeps and so on and so forth, 15 motorcycles, they even have mounted the uh, drone and uh, surveillance cameras on the ways to their camp so that they could have early warning signals and so on. That tells you how sophisticated these guys become. These are criminals.